So I'm on the Advanced IOTA again, uh, flying at about 105, 108, and this is rated to 100 kgs. So it's a little bit uh, hotter, a little bit more dynamic than the test certification, but it still works really well. It's just requires um, just a little more exciting on the maneuvers, but not too much. And I'm gonna be doing uh, the first stalls and spins and working through all that sequence and progression that people would do. And the more old school way that the pole stall has been taught is people call it a stall ball. And people, you know, the way it works is you break the glider and you go hands all the way down, the glider falls out of the sky, and then you catch it really low so that uh, there's no risk of the glider shooting if the you know, student's catching too high. And it's pretty messy and pretty uncomfortable, and sometimes people get twisted if they overreact. And there's a more uh, modern, sort of new school way of learning it, which is kind of like a spin to backfly. Uh, so it, it's similar to a spin appreciation where you're slowing the glider down and you're spinning it from really slow flight. The difference is you're gonna be flying so slow that your hands are already at the backfly position. What the backfly position is, is uh, once you get stable in a controlled, stalled configuration, the glider has these sort of backwards looking big ears that face forward and the trailing edge is open. You're actually flying backwards with a uh, significant amount of airspeed, probably not far from your normal trim speed. And that back flight position is probably gonna be about here. And there's a range for it. If you go a little higher, the ears get smaller and the glider's more open, but it's a little more unstable. It kind of wants to start flying again. And if you get really deep, which is gonna be like down here, the ears get big, and they, if they get too deep, they can start flapping. So there's a range of possible backfly positions in a similar way that uh, you have like a range of speed bar settings because when you're flying backwards, of course, your brakes are now on your what is now your leading edge, so it's kind of like you're flying with the A's. So to get into the stall, like I said, we're gonna start similar to a spin appreciation. I'm gonna fly really slow, even slower than the spin appreciation before. I'm gonna fly like right here, just below the carabiners. About like that, maybe one fist below. And then when I'm ready to enter the stall, I'm going to push one hand down. I'm gonna leave the other one there. And that wingtip's gonna stall pretty soon. You'll know what it feels like from the spin appreciation. The difference is when you feel it stall, you're just gonna bring that hand back up just to where it was. So the hands are gonna be symmetric. And because they're so deep after the glider turns about 90 or 180 degrees, the other side's gonna to stall too. And you're gonna be right at the back fly position. Once I'm in the back flight position and it stopped moving on me, I may have to wait a second or two for, uh, for it to stabilize. I'm gonna start exploring the range of how deep can I go before uh, the trailing edge starts getting pulsy and kind of violent. And then I'm gonna slowly go up higher and higher and find how much can I go before it gets really smooth and wants to restart. And uh, when I want to restart, I'm gonna be flying about here, so, and then I'm going to release in a two-step movement. The first step is going to allow the glider to come forward, open up those reverse big ears a little bit. And then the second stage, I'm gonna let it go all the way. So the glider's gonna fly out in front, and when I release when it's in front of me, it doesn't shoot. So in real time, it's gonna look kind of like this, and then that. So I'm in a pretty good spot to try that first uh, style stall that I just described. So I'm gonna slow the glider down. I'm gonna be flying really, really slow. I'm gonna look up at the glider and I'm flying very slow the carabiner. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna come back up. And I'm just gonna wait. It's a little crashy, so I need to come up just a touch to stabilize. I'm gonna go a little higher. You can see now I'm in a perfect back flight. It's really controlled. I can feel the wind on my face. And I go up a little higher and it wants to start. So that's kind of the upper limit is right above here on the carabiner. So I come down. And I come up the rest and I don't have to check anything. And that's a really nice way to enter the stall. It's not too violent. It doesn't have this big drop back thing. Uh, you can be really confident that all you need to do is just bring that one hand down, see it start to stall and then come back up and freeze. So once you spend some time doing a couple of those and I'll do one more just to practice, I'll do the other side. So I'm gonna slow way down, wait, kill most of my airspeed, spin it, come back up and just wait. come forward and fly. And it's really important when you're doing this stuff that you're very small and smooth in your hands. Don't add extra motion, even if it's a little scary and starting to 
to spin a little bit on you. It's not a problem. If you just stay still and you stay symmetric, nothing bad's gonna happen. It will settle out. So once you have an idea of where that sweet spot position is, which is about here for me, it's a little bit higher than where I was catching. We're gonna do a two-step stall, which is the technique that you would use for stalling a two-liner or a high aspect ratio glider. And the way this one's gonna work is I'm going to now try to stall the glider with more speed. So I'm gonna let it fly and I'm gonna pitch the glider behind me and I'm gonna slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And I'm gonna try to push through, feel my stall point break. The moment I feel the stall point break, I'm going to release both of my hands to just above that sweet spot position to try to keep the glider more open. I don't want to collapse it all the way. And uh, because the glider's open and it's behind me, I'm, my body's going to be swinging down. So I need to offset that pendulum by progressively breaking deeper and uh, preventing the glider from going out in front of me. And of course, if it does go out in front and it wants to fly. I'm just going to let it fly so I don't restall the glider because that's where things can get really messy. And um, what I'm looking for is I'm going to be watching the size of those ears during this process. And I want to keep them kind of at that middle level, not too small where the glider is going to want to refly and not too big where it's thrashy. So it's going to look like I'm going to slow the glider down. I'm going to feel it stall. I'm going to come up. And as I swing under the glider, I'm going to go deeper, deeper, deeper. And then when it settles, I'm going to come back up to that stabilized position. Okay. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to slow the glider down behind me. I'm going to feel it stall. I'm going to come up and then I'm going to come down. And it stabilizes and I wait until it settles and I come up to my sweet pot position, sweet pot position, let it come forward and let it fly. And as I get familiar with these, I really want to focus on staying on heading, try to demonstrate that I have really good motor control, that I can stay perfectly on axis the entire way. So I'll do one more and show you that I'm going to hold just in the same position the whole way. So I'm going to find this position. I come up and then I come down and I wait for it to go to the back fly. And as it comes forward, I just let it fly. So once I get really good at that and it's consistent, and I kind of understand the motion and I have the idea of coming up and coming down and making sure the glider doesn't overshoot. And actually, uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like if it does overshoot. If you, if you uh, don't come down enough and it wants to refly, it'll be uh, kind of like a snap stall. So I'm going to do. I'm going to show you that example. So if I come up and I don't come down enough, the glider comes forward, and I'm just going to let it fly right away. Um, you know, because I have some break, it's not going to shoot so hard. I'm not going to fall on the glider or anything scary like that. But the goal of this exercise is to get used to the back fly, get used to being really comfortable in it. So then, um, you know, once you're really good at it, the final stage is I'm actually gonna release almost all the way up and I'm gonna let the glider open. This is really what you're gonna need for a high aspect ratio glider that's gonna bend a lot. So it's the same idea as the last uh, example. I'm just gonna release really high and then I'm gonna come and catch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up pretty much all the way and then come back down. And then stay really nice and open. And I let it restart. And the final really refined version of this is the tail slide, where I'm gonna be in like a super high back fly. The glider is gonna be pretty much totally open flying backwards. And it's more of a style point thing, but it's just, it just shows that you have real mastery of the maneuver. Uh, and it's really sensitive and it's uh, just good practice to get good at. So it's gonna look just like the last one, except I'm gonna be even higher and even more sensitive in, on my brakes and you'll see how much more active my hands have to be. So I break it, I feel it stall, I come up, I come down gently and I'm flying backwards and it's like totally open and it wants to fly and I let it fly. So once uh, you've done a bunch of those and you feel really good with your stalls, now we can do spin, the proper spin to back fly. And so it's gonna start similarly, except I, um, I'm gonna let it spin more. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna release my hand more and more and more and let the glider try to do a full 360 and then get comfortable stabilizing it in a back fly. So I'm gonna slow the glider down like I was. I'm gonna spin it. I'm gonna let this hand up a little bit. I'm gonna let it spin all the way around and then I'm gonna spin my back fly. Stabilize and exit. And you can gradually get more and more used to this maneuver being more extreme by releasing higher and higher. So at a high level, I can slow the glider down and I can spin it and let this side up and I let it come all the way around and 
then I stabilize, wait for it to settle, get my control back fly, let it come forward, and let it fly. And then once you're really good at the spin to back flies, we can do a positive spin exit where I'm gonna allow the glider to go a little past 180 degrees, and this time, instead of setting it in back fly, I'm gonna go hands up and I'm gonna let it shoot. And the outside, which is gonna be the lower wingtip, is gonna shoot more, so I'm gonna have to catch that side. And the more I let this rotation go, the closer to 360, the more it's gonna shoot vertically instead of to the side, and I'll have to start adding both brakes. So I'm going to let it go a little past 180, let it go hands up, and then I'm gonna catch the dive here. So I'm gonna slow it down, I'm gonna spin it, go past 180, go hands up, and catch the shoot. And then I'm gonna do a bigger one to the other side. You can see it's a little more dramatic. So I slow the glider down, spin it, let it go almost 360, and you can see now it shoots a little more symmetrically. So then once you have uh, your stalls dialed, your spin to back fly, your positive spin, then you're ready for the deep stall. And what the deep stall is, is it's very similar to the tail slide, except I'm flying even higher and it looks a lot like it, like the cells are deflated. It has this kind of waffle grid looking pattern. Uh, but the difference is I'm descending totally vertically. It's a very sensitive, very unstable maneuver. The glider doesn't want to be there. I'm going to have to add all these active corrections. I'm gonna get into it just like the tail slide. I'm gonna slow down, I'm gonna come up, and I'm gonna catch the glider. I'm gonna to try to hold it directly above me for as long as I can. It's not gonna to wanna to be there. It's gonna to try to spin and fly out, but I'm gonna hold it as long as I can. So I'm gonna come and break. Feel the glider just starts to stall a little bit. I come up and I catch it. So you can see, see perfectly vertically. I have no wind in my face. It's a spin a little. And then to exit, I just go hands up and let it recover. So those are all of your um, basic stall maneuvers. Uh, it does take people quite some time to work through all of them. You, know, you need lots of practice at each stage. Uh, but you know, you're, what you're looking for is consistency and comfort in the maneuver and that you can kind of work your way gradually up uh, through the intensity before going on to the next one. And you hear a lot about this like 100 stalls, 300 stalls, all this stuff. And it's not about the numbers so much as it's about gaining comfort with all those steps. And I would say for the average person, yes, it probably does take somewhere between one and 300 attempts to go through all of them. But if you really focus on going through all those maneuvers and learning them well and understanding the nuances and the details, uh, you're gonna have way more experience and way more confidence in your glider than if you just do uh, you know, 300 stall balls and scare yourself and thrash your glider. So I hope that helps, hope uh, that inspires people and gives them confidence to try some of these new techniques out and I'll see you next time.